So let's take a look at scope one, scope two, and scope three, which is how greenhouse gas emissions are defined. So if we take a look at scope one, items included in scope one, so direct CO2 emissions, these are what your business are directly responsible for. Natural gas for heating, fuel for business vehicles, all your delivery transport, air conditioning, HVAC, specifically F gases used in those systems, and really any burning material. So if you're burning gas, natural gas, LPG, diesel, petrol, these are all your scope one emissions. So if we take a hypothetical curve of tracking your scope one emissions, what I have here is a purple line showing the calculated value by a business each year. Now, I've also shown error bars. Now, this is as much about how you collect the data as the accuracy of the data. Now, scope one, we're talking about, for most businesses, fuels, diesel, natural gas, F gases. All of these should be readily measurable. So if you're a transport company, I'm, I'm sure you have a very detailed picture of how much diesel your vehicles are using. Um, if you're, for example, a large hotel with multiple air conditioning units, you should have an F gas register and know exactly how much F gas is being used to top up your air conditioning or refrigeration on an annual basis. Now, also within the uncertainty is perhaps you haven't included everything. So, for example, in this curve, the carbon emissions actually jump up in the second year and we still have a potentially large error grade, error uh, margin um, on 2022. So when you first calculate your scope one emissions, you may have inadvertently overlooked something that you should then include in 2022. Then perhaps you've undertaken some sort of significant mitigation between 22 and 23, either you plan for it or you'll undertake it. And in this example, I've said um, some of those delivery vehicles may be converted to electric vehicles. Therefore, less fossil fuel use, less petrol, less diesel. Um, so therefore, the emissions come down. Now, also, as we go forward, the error bars are tightening up. So as you become more experienced in measuring CO2 emissions, scope one, your margin for error in these figures reduces year on year. It will never reduce to zero. There will always be some uncertainty, perhaps with how data is recorded. Um, but as you go forward, certainly for scope one, the you should be reaching a confidence level of plus or minus 10% in your um, carbon footprint move forward. Scope two is about electricity. It is still a direct emissions from your business. It's about electric vehicles that you use, but it's also about heat and steam. So if you are lucky enough to be on a district heating network, um, the heat and steam that you receive in, in from whatever source needs to be included for their carbon footprint within scope two uh, electricity. Um, so direct electricity use. Um, also bear in mind for some reporting requirements, um, you are required to report your worldwide emissions. So what, what we're describing here is not only for your UK business, but for your global business. And how you report that, there is some leeway, you know, obviously you can define for the UK, we emit this, for our, for
for example, European operations, we omit this for our Asian operations, etc., etc. But you do need to report for each area under scope one, scope two, and scope three. So I move forward. So similarly to our scope one curve, here we have our electricity use curve. And what we have here is a very well-defined line. And that's simply because the electricity usage is taken directly from your electricity bill, which hopefully is very accurate. So as you can see here, um, we have a bit of a, a step change from 22 to 23. So as I mentioned previously, what we've done here is move from fossil fuel vehicles to electric vehicles. And that is reflected obviously in greater use of electricity. So naturally the electricity bill has gone up, but what we have here is also a general trend downward. So as a business, what you want to do is look at energy efficiency measures, perhaps um, use of solar panels for self-generation, whatever it may be, but always bear in mind, um, you will never remove electricity. What you want is to remove carbon, but you will still be using obviously electricity. Um, other options, you could go for green contracts, uh, green electricity contracts, whereby you're specifically paying for renewable energy to offset the carbon footprint for scope two. But even if you are buying green, you do have to report the emissions as per UK government conversion factors, and I'll explain a bit more, um, for scope two. So you, for example, in 22, this company has about 600 tons of CO2 associated with electricity. Then you can say, by the way, well, this is offset by a green energy contract, but you can't say zero. You have to say 600, but offset by green energy. Finally, scope three, indirect CO2 emissions. And this is the, the biggest one for most businesses. It contains certainly the most items that you need to investigate. And the more generally, I should say, scope three are indirect emissions. So your these are emissions as a result of your business existing, but not necessarily in under the, the direct control of your business. So for example, waste disposal, you may have a waste carrier who takes away your waste and either recycles it, sends it to landfill. So you're indirectly responsible for that because your business obviously generated the waste, but it's the waste company that's directly responsible for it. So your business reports that under scope three. Now, quite a lot under scope three, and it won't be immediately obvious to businesses how you gather the data, but you know it covers everything from water usage, which is does have a carbon impact. So your water into your business and your wastewater out. Hotel stays, staff travel, business travel, business expenses. The largest one, would be supply chain goods. So your suppliers into the business and who you onward travel your finished product. Um, other thing to consider, construction works. So if you're either building or demolishing um, buildings on site, that's included in your scope three emissions. So as previously, um, a little graph of what you can expect. Again, we have a slightly rising curve at the start as understanding and real data starts coming through. Also, the error bars are tending towards higher um, simply because people tend to underestimate scope three. So there's greater potential that your actual scope three is higher than your reporting. 